it's so great to have you on the program. I'm Melinda Akinlami, and today we get inspired by a veteran artist who is exploring new territories in his 80s. Can you imagine that? While another one, a younger one this time, shows us the results of all that hard work. That's part of what to expect on today's edition of At House. A warm welcome. <laughs> It is well to dream. As long as we live, we shall continue to dream. He comes from a family of craftsmen, but over time, he was able to build a name for himself by pushing for initiatives that will make the arts take its pride of place in the educational sector. When he was not surrounded by books, he was painting, so most people know him as a painter. But what you're about to see is another side of Mr. Banjo Fasui. The Legacy Gallery is home to the works of veteran artist Mr. Banjo Fasui. That's where one can find his paintings mostly done in abstract. Artworks are to me like an investment and your, of, of, of your interest. They are, they, are, they are helping you maintain your own interest in art. And his over 50-year-old collection of artifacts, which he has tried to preserve over the years, a big part of his artistic journey. I left the in 1960, after the education course, and I've been impressed by the native caps of the, the houses and the, a few things I've been collecting them. Some of them survived the test of time, some of them got rotten. When you see somebody in Gambia doing a mask, another one in Kumasi doing a mask, you find there's usually a difference in all the things they do. And when you sit down and look at the mask, you see the difference in the third form and the environment where the artworks were produced. Mr. Fashi is using the time on his hands to do more, revive a passion which his family is renowned for, sculpture. I come from a family of craftsmen, which in our society are known as artists. I inherited this from my grandfather, through my father. I went for a training Rather than following grandpa's uh, system of working, we went to a former school. And to show that the family treat, my senior brother and myself were at the same class, same year in Zaria. So it's a family thing. In any art course, you spend the first two years learning all the other things, studying everything, sculpture, and um, commercial art, painting, uh, fabric, you do all the things general for your intermediate. Thereafter, you specialize. And there are people like God, like God did, who are gifted uh, five uh, talents, some two talents, some one talent. So some people may be interested in, in fabric painting and other uh, sculpture. I have interest in sculpture. So I've not forgotten my background. And this past year, when I just found myself completely devoted to art, I decided to revive one of the things I did in 1984, this Calabash sculpture. The first one, one and this one of them, uh, there are two of them still here. Every great art begins from a sketch. After seeing the idea in his head, he pours it out on paper before it transforms to the finished work. For this type of sculpture I'm doing, my main duty is to visualize. And that's why you find there the drawings of some of this sculpture before they were made. Does embracing sculpture come with its challenges for a man who has seen many moons? It does, but he's not dwelling on it and has surrounded himself with people that can assist him in achieving his goals. After the drawings, I sat down, okay, where do I get the Calabashi gold? And I went to Oyo and I bought a large quantity. 
started carving them like I did in 84. And I called the fiberglass man and said, look, put it there. See, I work in, you work well. I have four people working with me at regular intervals. Uh, when I need the carpenter, it's available. When I need the painter, it's available. When I need the fiberglass, it's available. So they're always there to do whatever is too difficult for me to do. But all these things are not too difficult yet. Okay. Uh, because God has given me the power to to a box. Okay. Okay. Where is your blade again? No more blade. There are people working with me to cover the areas that may be difficult, but the thinking you have to do yourself. Some of his sculptural pieces, too, have been preserved and restored, still standing after many years, although the color is different from the others. I said to myself, why can't I think about this work and see how to preserve them? If I put more paint, it won't mean anything. That might be still come there. So I decided to introduce fiberglass. So I called a friend and said, look, I want to do fiberglass on my sculpture. I said, but my sculpture, OK. I said, yes, I'm doing sculpture now. So he sent me somebody who can do the, this. So I told him, put, this, put the fiberglass here. Put the fiberglass here. And it worked. And that's what we have now. That's why there's a difference between the ones I told you were done in 84 and the ones that are done now. Because these ones have fiberglass to reinforce them to ensure that you don't destroy uh, quickly. A lot of contemporary artists look up to him. One of them is here to appreciate this new medium Mr. Fashui is working on. Recently he has delved into the production of uh, this body of works uh, made from calabash. Uh, he has called this calabario, you know, coined from uh, the word uh, calabash as an octogenarian is still delving into not just a canvas painting now something rigorous something conceptual uh, exploring what people will just ignore this is a reinvention a reuse of, of uh, what we have seen and perhaps we have ignored over time to a very large extent he's been able uh, to make uh, a vital statements with them and uh, now is is an avenue for other upcoming artists uh, to look beyond the, the normal materials at their disposal. From our look around the gallery, we discover that every piece has a strong meaning. Some of them talk about politics, royalty, or the bond between a mother and her child. I've seen the mother and child, then there's the first one, the Calabario, is the one they said they did in 1984 of an exhibition in, in Paris. I looked at it and I saw the, the thought processes that went into the production of, of this work and also the subsequent ones that he's been able to do. And I think recently he's, um, he's, he's fortifying uh, this work so that it can be enduring. These are great works that uh, uh, chronicle history and I'm sure uh, scholars and researchers alike should a venture to see at the repertoire of works at his disposal here. This veteran also believes that an artist doesn't have to look any further to achieve anything. He should just look around him. Action speaks louder than voice. I don't need to tell them this is what they do. If they see me putting calabash together, gumming them together, carving them, it is through them that art materials are not limited to what you buy in the shops. There are art materials everywhere, at your backyard, on your way to Lagos or to Calabar. You see things you can make together, ordinary wood. Take it, cut it, and make a sculpture out of it. The, my message to them is that they should not look for pastor of Paris. They should not look for this one before they do their work. They should look for local materials. For instance, notice these old pipes used for plumbing. It may be hard to recognize. It's been cut, painted, and looks splendid even though it's not completed. That's just an example of how the things around the environment can be turned to great art. 
The other sculpture I'm doing, which I call Plastico, is uh, made of local plastic, the one used by plumbers. I just found them in my house in, in nature, uh, dumped down like that, different sizes. I said, how can this thing be there like that? Then one day I just said, let me cut them. And it became fascinating. And I keep cut, cutting. And uh, somebody came after the Oshobo, Oshobo thing. Somebody came and was excited by it. She was taken to America when he took it. I said, slight, yes. He bought. And that encouraged me to say, yes, go on, there may be a market for it. I'm not looking for the market, but I'm looking for the joy you get from creating and seeing your creation come true. That is uh, my attitude. For this artist, there are no boundaries except in the mind. One can only imagine the next project he will be embarking on because there seems to be a rush of ideas, and that's why he's so full of life and believes the best time for an artist to express himself is now. It's not difficult for me to continue with sculpture, especially that I am tired uh, of painting. I have about 161 paintings now, small or big, finished or unfinished. And my ambition is to do 200. I leave them in this uh, uh, legacy uh, gallery. He believes that every man is a special kind of artist and wants to leave a legacy which will inspire generations. That's certainly an inspiration to many young hands. Use what's within your reach and turn that waste to wealth. Well, this next artist needs no advice. He's certainly been inspired by what's around him. You'll get the details when Art House returns, so don't go anywhere. A veteran Nigerian poet whose works have been translated into several languages he was born in Bayelsa State, South South Nigeria, and had his early education at the Government College of Mahia in Abia State. <laughs> 